Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. They'll even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Awesome, everybody. Welcome back to an amazing new episode of It Is What It Is podcast. I almost forgot my name, but I didn't. I'm your host, Cody Kelly. Look, y'all connect with me on three levels. First level being Instagram, one of my favorites, at CVMK33. Also, the new supplement line is almost out. Pre-order shop now at cvmkglobal.store where you'll see amazing supplements. I designed this product line for you so that you could be your own hero. Second thing is uh, join, subscribe to the YouTube page at CB Space K. That's Cody Vernon Kelly, where all amazing content is seen, heard, and felt. And, you know, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it. <laughs> Information is below. So uh, I have an amazing guest. He's been on the podcast before. We're covering a, a, an amazing episode on the five tips of not messing up or, or, or controlling your weight gain over the holidays. So I invited Bo to be back. He's a fitness influencer, gym owner, all around cool person. I wanted him to give some insight so it can help you. So when you're chowing down uh, between Thanksgiving and New Year's, you won't look up and it's January 2nd and you're 20 pounds heavier than you were before November the 25th. With that being said, Bo, how you doing today? Good, good. Thank you for having me, man. Oh, no problem, man. It is my honor. I appreciate you being back on the podcast. One of these days, I'm going to be on your podcast. I say, when I get oh, yeah. the invite oh, yeah. to be on Bo's podcast, I know I'll have made it. So, <laughs> hey, hey, well, I wanted to connect with you, man, because, you know, we're in a, it's a very uh, enjoyable season. This is the season of calorie consumption. You know, it doesn't matter what you believe or whatever. The holidays are designed for weight gain. You know, it is, it is, it is not for uni- everyone, not, not for everybody, everyone. but it's a unifying force. It is a thing out there. And I wanted to, you know, connect with you. What should people do? Tell me about your, you say you came up with five tips. Tell me about your tips to stop this tragedy from happening. Yeah, sure. So first of all, yeah, we have to find, find a way to enjoy ourselves. Right. But enjoyment doesn't always come just, I hope so from food. Right. The socializing with friends, family, or whatever, just enjoying some time off of work and stuff. So, but food is a big part of the holidays in our culture. So there's there's some ways where you can make it a little less damaging on your waistline. So number one, my best tip would be be nice. And what I mean by that is be so nice that you actually bring your own dish with you to wherever you're going, like a family get together or something like that, right? Bring your own dish. Why? Number one, it's going to make you look like a nice person. Number two, you know that your dish hopefully is healthy. And if there's no other healthy option, it's everything, if everything is covered in mayonnaise and all kinds of stuff, you still have your dish to go to if there's no other good options. So it's going to make you look good as well as it's going to give you an option if there's no, nothing else. So that would be my first tip, right? So the second tip is very obvious. Don't freaking skip your workout. <laughs> Holidays don't mean that you skip the workout. If anything, if you don't have to go to work, you have more time to work out. So hit right. a good workout. My best advice would be a strength training or weightlifting workout because cardio, uh, everyone thinks about cardio as this super thing for, for weight loss. But honestly, if you're going to have a big meal, you need to deplete your muscle your, your muscle glycogen because then mm-hmm. all the carbs that you're going to eat going to first – replenish your muscle glycogen and only then go into your excess fat around your your love handles right but that's going to be a trick to diminish the uh the damage that the extra carbs or the extra sugar is going to have on your body so uh, weight lifting deplenish uh, deplete the muscles feel the burn when you lift something overhead or some squats something like that so yeah what's up I no, I like it. I, I think the first the first step, uh, be nice. 
I think, you know, a lot of times um, the holidays are used as an excuse to eat other people's food. I think you should just be nice for being nice sake and contribute to the onslaught of food consumption. Uh, but I do think you're absolutely correct. You should bring a healthy dish. I'm not saying, look, hey, look, it's the holidays. I'm going to I'm going to, you know, eat something. I'm not going to just stick to the, the normal diet. I'm going to eat and feel good about it. But there is a balance between, you know, eating for enjoyment and just full on gluttony. Right. And I think in the holidays, we go to the extreme and be like, oh, you know, more, more pie, more cookies, you know, more ham. You know, I mean, we totally go left. Right. And I, I totally agree. And then the second one, you're absolutely right, man. Don't skip your workouts. You know, like because we're on break, most people take their vacation around this time. Most individuals have at least Thursday and or Friday off. So the tendency to switch up the routine is greatly increased. And because of that, it's like, well, I get to it. You know, I get to it. But that's, that's exactly the point. You have even more time. So there's no excuse. It's in your head. But practically, there's 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 no excuse for you not to hit at even just at home. Like if you if you do like three sets of 10 burpees with some sit ups in between, you're good to go. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be where you go out of your way to go to a gym. Do it at home. If no, you I have agree. Willpower, if you have gravity, you have a workout. Willpower and gravity. Now that's 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 food for thought. And, you know, I think you said so, you said this that really. I, I want you to elaborate before you jump to tip number three. Yeah. Sometimes I go into the gym and I see you know, and I I, I run. You know, you see me. You know, I I run. Obviously, the weather's cold, so I'm not outside running anymore. But I you know I get my cardio in, but it's not always like I don't do marathons because. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want a marathon runner's body. To me, they don't have great physiques. You know, I want a bodybuilder's kind of lean own. out. Do right. Right. So, and it sees their own as a preference, right? So for me, you know, I can, I can always substitute that with more reps. I can, you know what I'm saying? I can add on. I rather do, especially during this season, I rather do one mile than in the summertime when I'm trying to do four or five a day, right? Like it's just, it's just a different, it's a fluctuating uh, uh, evolution. So talk to us about that, because, you know, a lot of times people are like, man, I want to lose weight. You know, I want a six pack. I'm just going to run, 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 run. And they run and they never get it. Right. And then you get somebody who, like, can build a program and have a program built for them, stick to it, adhere to the diet and the nutrition. And it's like, you know, they just look like results come. Well, it's, you know, it to each their own. I mean, I will not fight anyone over taste if you like something more then there's, 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 you don't need science to prove it. It's just, I like this more, period, right? Uh, that being said, if you want certain goals, there are certain steps you need to take towards those goals. Um, so if you just run, for example, marathon runners, right? I'm not a marathon runner either. But some marathon runners run because they like something else, meaning for some people it's meditational, right? It relaxes them. It, it, it gives them, them time to think and let their minds wander and have creativity or just peacefulness, whatever it is, you know. But um, if it comes to strictly, I want to lose, not weight, but I want to lose body fat because you can lose weight in many different things. Right. If, if you lose a leg, you lose weight. That's not a good way to go, right? So you don't know where the weight's losing. It's Is it water? Is it fat? Am I actually atrophying and getting having less muscle is am i mm -hmm. eating up my muscle so if you want to lose body fat strength training is by far hands down the best way to go and a simple way of explaining that is and i don't have anything against running running is awesome but if we compare strength training would uh, place higher reason is when you run let's say you run on a treadmill the second you step off that treadmill that's the second you stop burning extra calories from your activity now let's say you hit 300 lunges in the gym with weights, if you want to be a little extreme, right? Uh, you're going to be sore for a day, two, or even three. It takes your body extra energy, a.k.a. calories, to rebuild the damage, fix it, get you back to normal, and then super compensate, get a little stronger, a little better. So the next three days, you're going to use extra calories. Compare that to stepping off the treadmill and stopping using extra calories or energy versus using extra calories or energy for the next three days. 
you do push-ups or bench presses, you do pull-ups, your back's sore, your abs are sore, your shoulders are sore, right? That takes so much energy for your body to rebuild and repair all the soreness. That's all extra calories that you're burning for the next few days versus just running on a treadmill for 20 minutes. You see where I'm going with this? That's true. There you go. I like it. I like it. I like it. Look, we're going to pause for station identification. Look, this episode is brought to you by CVNK Global. If you want to shop for all your fitness apparel needs, CVNK Global dot store that is s-t-o-r-e i'm glad i spelled that correctly <laughs> we'll get you the hookup with that being said Bo, bring me into tip number three what is your third tip uh for controlling this holiday season weight gain all right so there's only so much room your your stomach has and the key is to fill it up with the right stuff first and whatever room you have left that's the stuff where you you try your your pie or whatever some gravy whatever you want that's that's the bonus, but that's not the main meal, right? So when you come in, get some lease, uh, some 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 lean piece of turkey, right? That's your protein. It's gonna fill you full longer because it's protein, and then have your vegetables on top of that, and uh, fill that up. Drink some water, fill it up even more, and then whatever room you have left is is where you go and have a little bit of fun. But don't start with the fun. Start with the good stuff, and then whatever you have left, that's your fun stuff. I like that. Start with the good stuff, then get to the fun stuff. That's a perfect formula. Bring me to tip number four. So the fourth one is, uh, uh, I'm going to make it sound funny, but size matters. I hope a lot of people are going to agree with me. Size does matter <laughs> because if you have a small plate you and it's going to have an illusion of a lot of food because on a small plate you can fix uh, put much on so then you put pile on like layers of food right it looks like it's enormous amounts of food but on a small plate it's actually not that much so grab a small plate and the other part of size matters is for example glass people are gonna have maybe alcohol maybe some pop maybe some some juice or whatever and juice is dangerous because it's so much fructose which is sugar easy to gain weight and not even think that you're doing something bad because it sounds healthy but instead of having a wide and uh, short glass get a tall and narrow glass it looks like you have a lot of liquid in there but actually it's way less a narrow and tall glass it, you can walk around, look like you're socializing with people, right? It looks like you have a lot of liquid in there because it's so tall, but in reality, it's going to be less. So take a small plate and skinny, narrow uh, glass, and you're good to go. I like that. Take a, a, a tall, skinny, narrow glass. Is it really, you know, and this is something I'm, I, I think that's happening. I had this discussion on one of my earlier episodes. I talked about the psychology of consumption, right? Or the mm -hmm. psychology of food. Like, I think... We try to justify our uh, act, our interactions with food. <laughs> and so we'll say, well, there's only one cheeseburger or it's only a small fry. And therefore, in our mind, it's OK because it looks smaller than what it is. But even small things make great impacts. You can have a lot of great things, right? Like you can have a huge bowl of vegetables and, you know, be better for you. And even though it looks uh, more of uh, voluminous is, is of increased value It's actually better and is easier to digest and easier to break down uh, than a more compact uh, small order of, uh, of fries uh, glazed with, you know, salt. So, so why, why do we, why do we trick ourselves into think we're making the most uh, informed decision? Lack of education and lack of responsibility. Uh, quite often people don't want to know because that puts responsibility on them. If you don't know, you don't know. But if I know, then I actually have to do the right thing. So people don't even want to be quite often, they don't want to be educated because that's too much responsibility. Now it's my fault that I'm gaining weight. Now it's my fault that I'm getting sicker. Now it's my fault that I'm weak and have no energy, you know? It's easier to say it's somebody else's fault. You know, I, I have bad genes. No, you have big appetite you know so uh but uh, you know to prove your point for example quite often in my gym here people come in and say why can't i lose weight for the last two months i have only eaten salads and i'm still gaining weight and the, the what you said big versus small when you buy a store-bought salad the salad will actually have less calories than the little dressing on top of it 
the devil is in the details and the, these small little hidden things mm -hmm. because you can eat letters, lettuce and spinach all day long and you will never, ever gain weight, right? But that dressing quite often will have three, 400 calories, twice as much as the salad itself. So sometimes these small things hurt us and the big things are actually good for us. I like it. I like the small things can hurt you. Um, last tip, but what is yeah. the last tip for controlling this holiday? I left the best one for last. Uh, I like a little bit of humor, but you know what? It's not funny because it works. Choose some mint gum or brush your teeth with like right before you go. Why? Because mint is going to ruin your taste. And then all the dessert and all that good stuff is not even going to taste that well. So chew your mint gum and you're not going to go for seconds. That's interesting. I've never heard. I've heard of the. I've never heard of the the mint gum analogy. Is it that when there's more focus on oral hygiene, somehow it it counteracts? No, uh, just 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 think think of yourself when you brush your teeth, right, and then eat something. How does that taste? No, it's not the same. Right. Yeah. So it, it tastes yucky. It tastes wow. What was that? And if it's like carbonated, like pop or something, it's almost like gonna burn almost your. Uh, your your mouth and uh, tongue because of all that minty uh, freshness, you know. So it's just a trick to to ruin the taste for 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 a few minutes, you know. Awesome, awesome. Well, look, these are the five tips, but I shared these. This is the secret sauce uh, to really combating this holiday season. You know, because it's the holidays. I want you to have fun. I want you to go out. Yeah. I want you to connect with your family, friends, and loved ones. I also want you to be safe happy and healthy. I don't want to see you go backwards. So I asked Bo to come on here because we're interested in you not going backwards. Bo, where can I connect with you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I would love people to join my YouTube channel and the podcast, which is Stay Sore Podcast, Stay Sore YouTube channel, or just put in my Bo, uh, Bo Skitsko, the name, like Instagram, Bo underscore Skitsko, YouTube, Bo Skitsko, and uh, you can connect with me there. Or if you want to check out my gym, it's bofitstudio.com. Y'all, connect with Bo. Subscribe to his podcast on YouTube at Stay Sore Podcast. I like it. If you want to really get true insight from a true person that's involved in the fitness, uh, is credentialed, owns his own gym, and is really concerned about you being the best version of you, connect with Bo. Connect with him. You see the IG handle at Bo underscore Skitsko. Follow the man. He's amazing. Connect with him on the podcast at Stay Sore. Buy his book. He has a Stay Sore book. Support him. He's doing great things. If you want to keep seeing amazing influencers, amazing just people like Bo, you know what you got to do. Hit me up on Instagram at CVMK33 and the new Instagram handle at CVMK underscore global. <laughs> Shop at the store at CVMKglobal.store. Subscribe to the YouTube page at whatever it pops up. YouTube at CV space K, where all great content is seen, heard, and felt. This has been another episode of It Is What It Is podcast. Until next time, guys. Thanks. Take care.